Young and I'm Donna and we're from the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport and we work on the Ontario's After School Program. Donna, can you tell us a little bit about where the Ontario After School Program originated from? Sure, so the program began in 2009-2010 school year and it stemmed from the Provincial Obesity Strategy and that's why the program content for after school is really focused around physical activity and nutrition because we're trying to curb um, the high incidences of childhood obesity in the province. It also stemmed from the Poverty Reduction Strategy and that's because the program is very targeted to certain neighbourhoods across the province and that is for children and youth who have limited access to recreation opportunities, maybe because of their location or maybe because of cost. So those are the two main strategies that the program developed from. In the after school program, we, the ministry, ask you to do 30% physical activity, 20% personal health and wellness, and 20% nutrition education, which includes a healthy snack. Donna, could you tell the folks out there what we expect when it comes to the 30% physical activity time? Sure, I think variety is the key. Uh, quite often these programs are catering to children and youth ranging in age from 6 to 18. So you've got a lot of different developmental stages. So you want to make sure you're planning for variety and by that meaning that you could do cardiovascular based physical activity and look at the intensity that is being developed in the children and youth. So we would like to see them being vigorously active at certain times of your program. And by that we mean sort of puffing and puffing after the activity. You can certainly offer programming that is of a moderate intensity for the children and youth. And then some uh, have some variety where some of the content is of low intensity. So make sure you're uh, having the children really sort of push themselves and that gets into a bit more of the fitness piece of physical activity. Then we'd like you to look at cooperative games and through games is a great place to develop their fundamental movement skills. So that's very important. We know that children and youth who feel much more confident in their skills are more likely to participate in sports and organised activities later on. So ensure that they get their skill development through um, first initiating how the skill is done and having the right equipment. And by skills we're talking everything from throwing and catching and balancing and hopping and skipping, all those types of fundamental movement skills. And then incorporate those skills into their games that they're doing. Another area for physical activity is uh, purely sport and we know we've had a lot of feedback that a lot of the children and youth love to do sports in the after school program. So you can modify those sports by modifying either the type of area you're using because space is an issue, you may not have a full field, you may not have a full diamond for baseball or softball or t-ball. So adapt that and adapt your equipment so that you can still play the game but it's got modified rules to it. And what type of space would we need for this? Well, ideally you want to be in a space that um, either balls or equipment or rackets can be moved and swung and thrown around. So you want to make sure outdoors is the best. If you can get an outdoor space, that would be ideal. And uh, certainly if you're near a school or a, a community centre or an area, they're quite happy for you to use this space. And if you're indoors, then what I can suggest is once again modifying that equipment. So you may want to use softer balls, you may want to use bean bags, things like that instead of the heavier, harder equipment. And do I need a gym or will a large classroom do? Uh, yes, you can uh, make do with a large classroom for a lot of the activities, but safety is the most important piece and then you would need to ensure you're moving desks and chairs right out of the way and then of course being courteous to those people that are back in the classroom the next day so putting all those pieces of equipment back is really important. But um, the one thing you can do with smaller spaces is limit your numbers of children involved okay. in that activity. So uh, we've seen a lot of people use a rotational programming or timetabling and smaller groups come and do the activity and then move on and, and you rotate around so everyone gets the opportunity. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the 20% time for nutrition, nutrition education and a healthy snack. Donna, can you tell us why it's so important that we serve a healthy nutritious snack in the after school time period? Yeah, Pam, you're right, it's really important. 
We know that a lot of these children and youth in the program may come from homes where food is not so plentiful. Uh, we're in a lot of low income areas of the province and uh, there's a lot of food insecurity. And so we feel it's very important that at that time period, which is anywhere from 3 to 6 p.m., it's often, I know personally myself, it's a time when you're quite hungry during the day. So if we want the children to be able to participate in physical activities and to uh, be able to do their homework and pieces like that, it's important that they have some uh, nutrition in their bodies. So we certainly feel it's a really important piece. It needs to be a healthy snack and uh, that all children have access to that snack. Excellent. So during the nutrition education time, what sort of things would you like to see, would the ministry like to see the after school participants doing? Yeah, it's uh, we follow Canada's food guide for healthy eating, so make sure you're familiar with that guide and what makes up serving sizes for this age group and also what constitutes the food groups and the healthy foods within those groups. So we would like people, once again, variety is important when it comes to food and fresh food is very important. We really encourage fresh fruits and vegetables, that's an important piece of a healthy snack. And then some other ideas we've had um, throughout the years for the program are things like uh, certain dips like hummus and there's pita breads and crackers and some cheese and people have actually turned their nutrition piece of the program into a bit of a cooking session as well. So they've often had guest speakers like community members who are able to cook or share recipes and they come into the after school program and show the children how to prepare a healthy meal. What's been happening with that is the children are so excited that they know how to cook something, they often go home and show their parents what they've learnt and say, can I make this for you? So that's been a really wonderful part of the program and we encourage people to look at the cooking side if you have the facility to do that. We like people to talk about where different foods come from and that can be a cultural component of the program and where, how they're grown, where you purchase them. We've seen groups actually go into a um, grocery store with their children and youth and, and be able to um, buy the ingredients to make something so they know exactly right. where it's in the, in the grocery store and what are some good healthy options. So Donna, one of the questions that comes up is what type of facilities that uh, after school programs actually need? Well when it comes to nutrition and the snack, uh, many programs are lucky enough to have a full kitchen that they can use to do the food preparation and if you have that in your program we really encourage you to get the children and youth involved in the food preparation. That means everything from chopping and cutting to organising how it's uh, laid out and presented and that's all important pieces of snack preparation. Now other people don't have access to a full kitchen but they've certainly made the most of what they've had and they will often um, buy more fruits and vegetables that have peels on them like bananas and clementines and that way they still get the fresh fruit and vegetables but there's not a lot of preparation required. I think it's um, snack is served on a daily basis so I think you really need to look at a week's programming of snack and make sure there is the variety and it may have to be uh, something that's shopped for on a day-to-day -day basis in some circumstances and you don't have to worry about storage and just buy small amounts but still even if the children can't participate in the food preparation it's still something you can talk about with them right. so how what happens before this food came to us already chopped up how do we go about preparing this 20% of your time needs to be spent on topics like bullying, uh, drug abuse, personal dental hygiene, but we really want to concentrate on creative ways on how you can teach these to your children and youth within your programs. Donna, do you think that you could sort of elaborate on how we're going to speak on these or how, how organizations can speak on these topics? Sure, yeah, personal health and wellness is uh, one of those things where topics are um, changing on a daily basis. So you sort of want to talk about things like cyberbullying because that's the current uh, topic for these children and youth that they might be in interested in knowing about. So I think you need to stay current and I think getting feedback from your participants in your program is really important for this, for this uh, component because for them to discuss and learn about different personal health and wellness topics they need to really um, 
feel that they can contribute to a discussion and that's one way to, to look at health education and personal health and wellness is actually through discussion and sometimes with the older children even debate. So it's debating back and forth about values, about what's acceptable in society, about what is the rules of their school that they're at. So um, I think you need to take the cues from the participants in deciding what you're going to talk about. You can certainly plan ahead for that and you can hold weekly short uh, meetings with the participants to say next week is there some topics that we need to talk about, what's come up in your daily life, what's come up in your home life that you might like to discuss with others. And we all always must be careful with personal health and wellness because it does deal with values. That we're cognizant of children feeling comfortable in talking about different areas. A big one that's obviously been around for a while now is body image. Yes. And you will find some girls especially, but boys also, feel comfortable talking about that and, and how they feel and others not so much. So we never push people. Um, we always really encourage them to contribute and uh, I find that there are a lot of great resources also out there for personal health and wellness because it can be a delicate topic at, at times. So certainly turn to those um, very well created resources by very reputable organisations where you can get ideas of discussions and worksheets and types of activities that you can do. So it might be kind of a, a nice idea to invite guest speakers in and um, have public health come in if you're not comfortable with, with certain topics. Yes, that's a great idea. talked a little bit about 30-20-20. To conclude, we'd like to talk a little bit about how to look at your different program plans and all the different resources that you might be able to use. Donna, can you chat about that for a minute? Yeah, the program planning is very important. Um, we have a lot of places and we have a lot of organizations that have developed fantastic resources in all those three areas and we really encourage you to find those resources and use the suggestions in there. Another thing you can do is uh, ensure your staff and the staff of after school are networking with others because there are some great ideas that one after school program have administered and another doesn't know about it yet. So we really encourage the networking of sharing of ideas. But it's important to get the feedback of your participants to really, this is not a curriculum driven program, this is a recreation based program that is meant to be fun and that we want the children and youth to really get some great development in physical activity and, and nutrition learning from the program. But it needs to be something that they're enthusiastic about and the staff are enthusiastic about. The staff need to engage the children, they need to be involved in the programming as well and you need to find things that are fun for, for the children to do. So make sure you really spend a fair bit of time doing your program planning, use resources, network and use your participants' feedback. Excellent. So it sounds like on after school is mm -hmm. the place to go. Um, one other thing, Donna, if we could just touch base on rural versus urban. Mm -hmm. And is there a difference and do we notice a difference? Well, Pam and I have been out on quite a number of site visits over the years to these programs. We've seen some fantastic programs being implemented and we have noticed a difference. Um, when you take personal health and wellness, when we went to some of the more rural communities, their topics are farm safety, <laughs> uh, transportation, road safety, and when you are more in urban areas, they may be talking about totally different topics. So that, there's a difference there, access to space, and access to types of facilities and equipment okay. is very different across the province. So your program will be steered according to what you have access to. But we find some of the best programs have known how to use their community members. Okay. And it seems the smaller communities can do a really good job of that too because everyone's known and they know what expertise or um, experience someone has had in their community and they're willing to go and ask them if they would mind coming into the program and delivering something that they, they know very well and so using those guest speakers and, and people in the community I think can be done all across the province for sure. Excellent. Well folks, thanks so much. Don and I are thrilled that you spent the time with us and please check out all the resources that we've talked about but especially on after school. Thanks.